We've got one of the best 145 pounders on the planet, the pride of Manchester, the man who won the PFL 145 pound tournament last year, right here at the theater against one Bubba Jenkins. His uh, 2023 campaign started off on the right foot with a very, very impressive win over Marlon Rice. He returns to action tomorrow on the ESPN Family and Networks against Jesus Pineda. He is Brendan Lochnane, our old friend. He's kind enough to join us right now. Brendan, thank you so much for the time, my man. Uh, you're joining us on weigh-in day, which I really appreciate. It's a Thursday card for PFL. You weighed in, uh, what, some four or so hours ago. How did it go? Yeah, really good. And thanks for the introduction, Ariel. That was a good one. That was a good one. You went it. right into the detail. I loved it. <laughs> I appreciate it. I appreciate it. So all good. No issues. I know, I know you fought. I mean, April 1st wasn't that long ago. And uh, November wasn't that long ago. And August wasn't that long ago. Uh, these cuts, <laughs> I'm sure, don't get any easier. But you're doing them consistently and, and no problems. No problems whatsoever. Um, at this point, I just feel like I live in the cage. Like I'm just at a fight week every couple of weeks now. Uh, yeah, it's a wild schedule, but uh, I'm used to it now. I feel like I'm, I'm a tournament fighter. I don't think I could go back to conventional fighting now, you know? You're so used to the format that you love it, even though some people lament it. Um, and you're used to the life as well, my friend. I mean, you're a million-dollar fighter. I see you on these planes and stuff like that. I saw you doing some shadow boxing on a plane with a shower in it. I've never taken a shower on a flight. What is going on over here? Is that your private plane? Is that how you're riding these days? <laughs> Not quite. I'd probably have to win about five seasons to get one of them. But no, that was uh, that was Emirates, and they were kind enough to upgrade me uh, when I got there. And then I thought, wow, what I get? A, a... Did you see that? I had a shower. Yes. I had a full room. I was like, no, I've got to get some content in here. So I'm like setting cameras up, shadow boxing, making a whole meal out of it. You know. Wait, is hey, that? And actually, yeah. I actually I was sat next to you. What's that guy's name? Yeah. Oh, I was sat next to a famous rapper and I forgot his name. Ah. How bad is that? And you, who, who's the guy that sings Mood Swings? Who sings Mood Swings? Frank, do you know? Little, little, Not little something. No, let's see. Little uh, something. Is that, is there, there's so many littles. In, uh, <laughs> little TJ. Little TJ. Oh, I see yeah, right that, here. That, Mood he Swings. Was, no, I'm not familiar. He was, uh, he was next to me on the flight and we ended up talking for like 60 hours. <laughs> Wait, who did he recognize you or did you recognize him or you guys just started speaking? So, funny story, the internet wasn't working on the plane. So he had no idea who I was. I had no idea who he was. And then he was just walking through the plane with chains. Uh, and you know how it is. Yeah. Like the rapper look. And I'm like, he is definitely a rapper. And then uh, it had a bar. It has a bar at the back. So he goes back to the bar. I'm at the bar. Well, we're sipping a cup of tea at the bar. And I look at him and I'm like, hey, and then we start talking and we're just talking for hours. And then he was like lifting up his top where he's been shot. Oh, my God. He was just exchanging, exchanging stories. Yeah. By the way, the the, uh, the plane had a bar. What kind of plane is this with a bar and, and a shower? Had a bar and a what? shower aerial. Emirates first class. It's different level. Oh, my gosh. Wait. And by the way, the shower, is it your own shower or is it a, like everyone gets to use it? No, 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 no. no. Wow. Imagine. No, no, no. It's one. <laughs> One shower for just the first class, and then they say, right, what time would you like your shower, sir? I'm uh, like, I'll have it at 10 in the morning when I wake up to my caviar. And they were like, okay, and then they wake up, and then you, have your, and then you go and have your shower, then you have your pajamas on, which they provide, you know? Wow. And then you're just chilling at the bar, sipping cups of tea. You know? That is true. Life was great. So you took the shower, because I feel like taking a shower on a plane would be a lot of fun. I had to do it. You How could you not? That, I didn't yeah. even need a shower. And I'm like, okay, you we'll might take as well. it. You might as well. Oh my God, that is incredible. Um, uh, by the way, the win over Marlon, that must, I mean, that's, I know he's maybe not where he once was, but uh, I think everyone was wondering, okay, you won the tournament. How would you look in the first fight off the bat? I think, I mean, I kind of thought it was a mistake to put Marlon in there against you off the bat. Maybe you try to build him back up so that the fight could be bigger. But uh, I mean, you put all that doubt to rest. That was a very dominant win. I'm assuming you were happy with it. Yes and no. Oh. I agree with what you said. I don't think Marlon should have been in there fighting with him, but I, I see why PFL did it. You know, he's a massive name. I'm a name now. And uh, it made a lot of sense in that. But, I mean, we actually share the same boxing coach in Thailand. Um, and, like, he was just like, I don't want anything to do with this fight. Oh. So he didn't train me for the fight. He wouldn't train me. He's like, I'm not getting involved. So it made it kind of awkward for my training in Thailand. Uh, 
And yeah, I mean, this this stuff happens in the sport, you know. Um, me and Marlon went at it, and you know, I, I was extremely confident going into that fight, and I'm glad it panned out the way it did. Okay. Um, and did you, you know, now I know you say that you're used to the format, but are, are you are you feeling worn out at all? Are you feeling tired? And any of the uh, effects of the schedule getting to you? I actually feel the complete opposite. It's wow. kind of strange, honestly. I don't know if you've seen the heart rate post that I put on yes, yesterday, but 30. the resting heart rate. No, no. Like, I want someone to come at me with a lower one in MMA right now. I need somebody to come at me because who else has got 30? So if that doesn't tell you I'm relaxed, then nothing ever will. That is unbelievable. So 30 beats per minute. You put that out there yesterday. Uh, that is every two seconds your heart is beating. How's that even possible? Let me tell you how dialed I am in. This is insane, right? So throughout the camp, I monitor it every morning. We're at 36, we're 34, we're 32, 33, we're around that. Every day, every fight week, three days before the fight, it drops to 30, wow. like on the nose. And I'm like, and then like I have a mind coach and he was like, if it doesn't happen one time, don't let it throw you off. And I'm like, okay. And then it did happen again. I call him and he was laughing. He was like, well, we're just tuned in, aren't we? We're yeah. just, this is what we are. We're tuned into our mind and body. I love that you have a mind coach. I was just talking to Mike Malott about that, who's fighting on the UFC card this weekend. How long have you been working with him? Before Bubba, just before... Uh, no, Chris Wade. Started with Wade, then Bubba, then Marlon. Um, shout out to Bruce, a uh, great guy. Benny Shawman as well, who you know. I've been working with both of them two guys. Fantastic people. And I've really took the mental side very seriously over the last three fights. Why did you start working with them? Because I didn't have the best start to last season. I really didn't. Um, and after them first two fights, I was having issues where I wasn't pulling the trigger. I'd be getting guys really hurt and not pulling the trigger. And then my coach, I've been doing this since I was 15 years old. And he said to me, this is not physical anymore. Something's has going on in your head that's not letting you pull the trigger. So I need you to find someone really good to work with. And I did. And here we go. Uh, could you tell, you know, you're, you're there now, uh, fight week. I know the event is tomorrow. What are the vibes at PFL these days, especially... Uh, coming off the Francis and Ganu news, does it feel like? I mean, that's a big freaking deal, and that was a lot of attention that they got just a few weeks ago. Does it feel any different now that they're in the Ganu business and it seems like a real player for any free agent out there? Truth of the matter is, I'm just extremely happy for Pete and everybody at PFL because they really, really deserve this. They work really hard behind the scenes. They treat the fighters great, and when I seen the Francis was a free agent. I was secretly doing this behind the scenes thinking, please, he came over, you know, hopefully next year I get to fight on that card. Hopefully Jake's on it. Hopefully Francis is on it. And hopefully I'm the third one down, you know, and hopefully they do buy Bellator. Hopefully I fight Pitbull. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows what's going to happen, Ariel? But there's there's some super fights out there for me also. And I'm, I, I am hoping that I get on their card. Wow. Uh, I, I have heard, I heard the PFL Bellator thing, but I don't think there's much to it right now to be honest i don't want to get your okay. your hopes down i think there are other players i think Beltor is going to be sold pretty soon i i am i'd be okay. shocked if it was pfl but would that would that be uh you know for you like a kind of dream fight right now pip you pitbull obviously volkanovsky would be great but i don't think that's happening anytime soon they're not co-promoting with anyone um would pitbull be up there for you yeah of course i mean anyone that they can bring over with a massive name like Essentially, like what Marlon, like what they matched me up with Marlon, that was a big name for me. Like, let's have it right. Tomorrow night, I'm fighting Jesus Pinedo with 20, 20 and 6. He's a southpaw. He's a very awkward fighter. He's a good fighter, but nobody knows him. So, yeah. all the risks on me, you know. So, for me, I like to fight guys like Marlon and, you know, Pitbull. That'd be a great fight for me. Anyone that they can bring over with this name value this is what I'm interested in as well. Yeah. What, uh, what do you know about Pineda? Um, you know, he's been in the UFC, fought McDessie, he fought a couple of guys in there. He uh, He's a 55er. I've seen him dying to make weight. He, he's just, he's done it, he's made it, so fair play to him. And uh, he's very experienced for such a young lad. Southpaw, good kickboxing. Um, and we're going to find out, Ariel, we're going to have a good old scrap tomorrow on ESPN, why not? Um, and I know it's been a great time for PFL on the flip side, not such a good time as far as drug testing is concerned. Um, that's crazy. What is it, like 10 or so fighters? I know Rob Wilkinson was supposed to be on this card. He was the light heavyweight champ from last year. What do you make of what's going yeah. on here with the PEDs? I've been quite vocal about it. Obviously, I'm not happy about it one bit. Like, 
we put enough on the line as it is, you know. My brain's on the line, my health's on the line. And then everybody's popping for all types of stuff. Like they sent a list out of, I've seen it online, of what people were actually popping for. Some of them were like four substances and it's like, what, and I'm getting in the cage and fighting these people. Yeah. You know, thank God now that they've all been caught. Hopefully that sends a message to everybody that's doing it in here. And hopefully that's the end of it. And hopefully there's going to be more stringent testing coming up to the semifinals. That's what, you know, it has to happen, obviously. Uh, can you tell if you fight someone and they're on, like, can you feel if they're on PDs or are you experienced enough to tell or maybe the eye test? Like, and, and, and do you feel like your radar is up even more right now? Yeah, especially in training. In training, you can tell so, like, oh wow, I've trained with guys and then six months later, I've trained with them and I'm like touching them and I'm going, yeah, he's a brick wall. He's on some stuff. You know what I mean? You can definitely tell it's... Uh, you can't so much tell with the naked eye sometimes, but it's a feel factor. And it's definitely something that's rife in our sport and it needs kicking out. It really does. You know, there's enough danger involved in this sport anyway. We don't need any more. Uh, any talk about you fighting in England later on this year? No, but I'm going to say this live on here. Please. And hopefully it happens. So I put the idea across. I Well, we make the final. Right, they have the European final on the second of December, I believe, oh. in Dublin. Why would you not just shift me off the of the America card and put the final in Dublin? Yeah, and the second of December, I just shift me to the final of the European card, and then we sell out the three arena and we have a good old time in Ireland. How about oh that? Oh my gosh, that would be tremendous! I was just at the three arena for the Katie Taylor fight. What a what a venue! I love that venue. It's tremendous. What a venue. I fought there before. Oh yes, that's you know, right. It's written in the stars for me to go back there. That's where I got robbed of my first world title. And I will go back and get my second. Oh, that would be such a great story. Have you told this to uh, Pete Murray and the crew? Well, listen, you've got the platform. All there right. we go. It's okay, there, there it is. Universe. Yeah. Put Brendan in Ireland. Let's go. We need, I, I like what they're doing with PFL Europe, by the way. I watched their first show. It had a great vibe to it. Did you watch it? Lewis McGrillan, Dakota, it's crazy, right? Lewis McGrillan walked into my gym at 12 years old, 13 years old, and like, I just knew from the start, I was like, this kid is an animal. And then I helped him, trained him, you know, brought him up, put him in contact with PFL, and now look, it's just grew into this huge thing. And then Dakota, absolute superstar, Simeon Powell. Big shout out to all them guys, because, you know, I'm so glad that PFL has ventured over into them territories because we have so many good fighters. Is PFL officially the second biggest promotion in the world? I think it's quite clear now. Do you agree? Uh, I mean, in America, uh, the Bellator guys get very mad when I say this, but it just feels like <laughs> they get so mad. They think I'm on the, by the way, they think I'm on the payroll. It's the craziest shit I've ever heard. You think I'm on the payroll? Like, what are you talking about? I'm just telling you like it is. The 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 stakes feel bigger. I, I will also tell it like it is. I was very against the league format. Early on, like when I was at work at ESPN, I was vocal about that. I didn't like it. It felt like the IFL back in the day, if you remember that. I thought it was too gimmicky. Now, I actually really like it. Why? Because it differentiates you from everyone else. There's so much MMA on right now. What's the difference? They're all the same. At least with PFL, we know that there's stakes. There's 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 rankings, uh, not ranking, standings. There's playoffs, all that stuff. That's like back in the day, Strike Force. they had women. UFC didn't have women, so that was their big differentiator everyone has women on 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 their uh card so that's great but you need something to differentiate you from the ufc because there's so much damn ufc on right now it's impossible to be different that's their thing i like it they're they're coming out they're signing big names i hate the uniforms i have to be honest i think it's horrible we need some personality we need some uniqueness i need you to come out like i'm not going to be too positive here but it's like i think you guys are number two and and and, and the truth is like bellator has an event next week and like there's not enough buzz. Like, I don't feel any buzz leading up to their events. I don't think they do a good enough job of promoting themselves and getting the word out there about their events. And if I'm being honest, and I'm probably going to piss off a few of them when I say this, sorry for going long, I think they're a little bit smug about it. You know, they tell me like, oh, you know, oh, you know, like what? PFL, really? P those guys, they, they don't sell any tickets. They don't do this, that. I'm like, yeah, what's going on with your events? No one's talking about them. There's no buzz for your events. Wow. I'm just being honest, you know? Come on. 
you are going to get in trouble for this. You know that, lawyer. <laughs> I don't care, Brendan. I don't care. You know what, Brendan? <laughs> I don't care. And you know what? It's going to be a big week for Manchester. Are you going to walk out to Blue Moon? You've got me. Say, I mean, we got Champions League on Saturday. Are you, you're you're a you're a City fan, right? Manchester is blue, yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> Wrong side, brother. Wrong side, brother. Wrong side. Yeah, come on. Even for yeah, this, we... you don't you don't cheer for your town. You root against your town in the Champions League final. If I put a Manchester City shirt on, I don't think half of my family will talk to me again. Come, on. it's your town. It says Manchester on it. It's your town. It's your Nobody people. Ain't. I don't think you quite understand how <laughs> deep it gets in Manchester. Like it gets real deep. Like you gotta piss a lot of people off by putting on a blue shirt, especially in my family. Did you watch last weekend? Uh, yeah, I had one eye on it. Yeah, yeah, one eye off. You know. Listen, can I tell you something? I'm no expert. Started off horribly. I thought United fought back. I thought they looked good. I mean, they showed some heart there. They didn't give up. I thought it was going to be like six nil after the first thirteen seconds. I mean, yeah, but. Nobody can mess with City right now. Look at yeah, them. You've got to give them the juice. Come on. Yeah, come I, on. Let's just give. They're tremendous. Yeah. They're tre my, my son is a diehard fan. In Manchester. In <laughs> Manchester, we say they're flying. They are flying. And they're not bottling it like those uh, lads in Arsenal over there. Uh, Nottingham yeah. Forest flying as well. I don't know if you heard the news. We're staying up and uh, we're keeping Dean Henderson. So that's big. What about Lionel Messi? Did you see that news today? I've just seen it today. Miami. Crazy, right? What is going on? People are going to Saudi Arabia and MLS. No in between. <laughs> it's, all, it's just this now, isn't it? This it is, is what we're doing now. Yeah. Yeah. People are just chasing the coin. But you can't blame them. They're all getting older. But how much money do you actually want? I mean, what was it? How much is he getting? He's getting a crap load. But the crazy thing about it is they're giving him a revenue share of the Apple deal, the Apple TV deal, and the Adidas deal as well with MLS. Like Basically, what I think happened was <laughs> Apple, Adidas, MLS, they all came together and like, we need to make this happen so that he comes here and then a rising tide lifts all boats. And I actually think it's brilliant. Messi playing in any wow. venue is going to sell out now, no matter who he's playing with. True. And, and the Ronaldo thing did go well over there that I heard with the revenue and stuff. So, you know, they, they threw their money on the table and it's obviously worked. So, yeah, the business model is not flawed, is it? Yeah. I would rather be playing in America than Saudi Arabia. That's just me. Call me crazy. Uh, so I think he's made uh, the right call. You continue to make... The right calls, my friend. Thank you for coming on. Good luck tomorrow night. And, uh, you know, if you want to come out to Blue Moon, I wouldn't hold it against you. I don't know about your family and friends, but I think it would be fitting considering the game on Saturday. Your call. <laughs> Ariel, thank you for having me as always, my brother. Thank you. You're the man. There he is, Brendan Lochnane, the best 145-pounder in the PFL.